15 on my phone. So let's call the meeting to uh, the uh, July 18th, 2019 meeting of the City of Victoria Planning Commission to order. Um, is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the commission on an item not on the agenda? Seeing none. One item you probably all noticed, uh, cons the number two, the item number two on the consent agenda, final plat for the ranches at Terra Vista subdivision phase two has been removed from the agenda for right now. Um, and we're ready for item number one, the variance and prelim preliminary plat request for the ranches at Terra Vista subdivision phases two and three. Good evening, commissioners. Item number one is the approval of the preliminary plat for the ranches at Terra Vista phases two and three. This preliminary plat is located south of Bianchi Drive and located at the end of the existing uh, Terra Vista Ranch Road. Uh, the applicant is requesting um, 66 single family residential lots and two common areas. Of these, 15 will be double frontage lots uh, on the planned extension of the Terra Vista Ranch Road. And these double frontage lots will have driveways uh, on both Terra Vista Ranch Road and also Bianchi Drive. The applicant is requesting variances in order to accommodate this. Uh, the variances being variances to the ordinances that say you cannot have uh, driveways uh, into a non-local street and also you cannot have uh, double frontage lots. Staff recommends the approval of this preliminary plat and also the variances seeing that they meet the intent of our ordinances. Staff analyzed the site and compared it against commercial driveway requirements and determined that if the site were to be developed uh, commercial, seven driveways would be permitted based off of the square footage fronting Bianchi Drive. Additionally, reverse frontage lots are allowed by code and are essentially the same thing as double frontage lots except for the additional driveways. For these reasons, staff believes the request meets the intents of, of the ordinances and granting the variances would not be a detriment to public safety, health, or welfare. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to open a public hearing on this agenda item. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the commission on this agenda item? Seeing no one, we'll move on to deliberations on the variance and action on the same, I believe would be the first agenda item. Any discussion by the commission? Looks pretty cut and dried to me. I did pull the neighborhood and nobody said anything against it. Nobody felt like that was going to um, take away from the general characteristics of the neighborhood or anything like that. So I hear any opposition there. I'd also like to note that the, um, the limitation of the seven driveways is, um, if you look at the actual uh, drawing on the plat, there are um, access easements that I don't think we actually, um, adequately explained in the staff report. And so the, um, by accepting the variance and accepting this uh, preliminary plat, those driveways would be limited to those seven locations that are shown um, on the actual drawing. They'd be limited to that, to the plat, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Any, any further discussion? Do we have a motion on approval of the variance? I move to approve both the preliminary plat and the variance request. Can we do them together? Can we do both? Yeah. So moved, is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Welder. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, number one passes. The second um, item on the agenda is a variance for the Texian bookstore. The Texian Bookstore is located at the intersection of Vine Street and Forest, Forest Street and is addressed as 408 West Forest Street. The property was originally permitted as a home business. However, it has been determined that the owner does not use the property as their primary residence. Therefore, it does not meet the city's requirements as being a home business. The applicant is requesting variances to allow the existing parking on the site which includes three parking spaces located on the side of the property. And does not include any handicap spots. The city requirements would require 10 parking spots with one of them being a handicap spot. And also the existing parking is located halfway 
in the right of way, which is not permitted by current city ordinances. However, it was at the time of the development of the property, making the parking, uh, making the current parking arrangement non-conforming parking spaces. The applicant is requesting uh, variances to the ordinances that require the additional seven parking spaces and also the ordinance that requires the parking be located entirely on the property and not in the right of way. Staff recommends denying the variances of waiving the off-street parking requirement for the commercial retail use at this location, finding that it does not meet our criteria established for granting variances. Due to, the, due to the property being located in a primarily residential area, staff believes that the addition of off uh, the addition of on-street parking in the neighborhood can be detrimental to the uh, surrounding neighborhood. At all? Yes. Okay. At this time, we'd like to open a public hearing on this item. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the commission? Yes, ma'am. If you just step up and say your name and. Hi, I'm Evie Bethune. I'm the owner of Texian Books. I actually have two things to say in light of Mr. Nelson. Nelson. Oh, hi. Talked to you earlier on the phone. In light of what Mr. Nelson had to say, um, the first I want to address right off the bat because it was not actually in the packet um, that was sent to me by Mr. Nelson earlier in this week is that when I met with the city offices, it didn't matter whether or not it was my primary residence at that point in time, and it is truthfully not my primary residence. I do, once in a while, stay upstairs when I'm working late at the store. And in fact, there was a long discussion about whether or not they were going to, you know, quote unquote, come and count how many nights I put my head on the pillow, kind of, so to speak. Um, so that is actually the first time hearing of this that that could could be a problem moving forward, regardless of how this variance turns out. So I'd just like to bring that up and bring that to people's attention that that was um, something different than what I've been hearing for the past three months. Second of all, with regard to the parking and this variance at hand, what I would like to bring up and point out is that uh, while I certainly appreciate the position that has been laid out in the packet, there is a different way of interpreting the five variance exceptions that Ms. Fulgham listed in the packet. For example, um, the city primarily focuses on the residential nature of the neighborhood. What they're failing to point out is that the neighborhood is filled with bail bonds. There's cattle at the end of the street. Somebody has a working ranch down there. It is less than a block off of 59, which is one of the most major streets in Victoria, and is part of the original town site. So putting in something like handicapped parking um, and a parking lot is quite frankly, simply out of the question, not only because it would be more harmful to the neighborhood than not putting in a parking lot, but also extremely expensive. And so while I don't think it's an unreasonable position that they've laid out, I'd also like to point out that when you have the ability to decide something that's ambiguous at best, I find it interesting that it's coming down not in the favor of business development of downtown Victoria. And I think that's something that we should consider moving forward. Thank you very much for your time. Does anyone have any questions of Ms. Bethune? Okay, let's move on. Discussion of the variance. We've done this before. I don't see why we can't do this again. My concern is that we'll continue to do it to a point where we do degrade the, well, the nature of that area. Well, how, how can you justify telling her no? When we did it less than what, less than a year ago, a few months ago, in a much more congested area, and yeah. much more, much more residential area. I mean, yeah. I, I drove over and and observed the area, and to be real honest, that whole block. You've got, Dairy Queen, I think it is, on mm -hmm. basically a quarter of it. There's one home, behind Dairy Queen. There's the Texian bookstore, there's one small house next to them, and then one on the far, and, and, and the Texian basically takes up not quite a quarter of the block, but a pretty large, almost a quarter of that block, and there's one home across from it, and then you've got the bail bond on the other side, and then if you go one block down south, the house that is directly across the street from the Texian, 
doesn't even have curb and gutter, and there's plenty of places for people to park there off street. And then basically you almost be parking on a section of grass. And the section of, what would it be, Vine? No, the address is Forest. So the section of Forest that actually the Texian sits on easily can park five cars off on street and would not be in any way, looks to me like detrimental. Very little traffic. Um, I would be in favor of granting the variance myself. I guess. I guess I'm really getting stuck on the the first one, but I think it's I think there's a public safety issue too that we have to consider when we grant variances like this or look at them. And I just I can imagine that there's events being held there because I know that there are. I've seen that on Facebook and things, and I just have a concern for when an event is being held and there's no sidewalks and people are coming out. And you know when we deal with actual downtown, we kind of expect that sort of traffic pattern down there, but. I, I don't see that in a residential area, so I have a public safety concern. That's that's really what I'm kind of. Stuck I also don't on. see it as as unfriendly to business development. It's it's the fact that we're taking a structure that is not intended as a commercial building and trying to convert it into one, with several things that will be lacking in terms of safety, in terms of accommodations for the handicapped and things like that. It just concerns me that we'll continue to say yes, and then the next one's going to be in another spot and we're going to say precedent's been set we can't say no again and we can't right. say no again and soon um we'll have changed the whole face of that neighborhood i agree totally and i think you know me as a realtor i mean when i have people looking at commercial properties i really encourage all of these fact finding things with with staff and, and i think and that's something i'm carrying back to other realtors and stuff too but i think it's it, these are things that need to be examined and looked at uh, but we, we can't change the fact that it, you know it's just not meeting those characteristics so I tend to agree it's not a commercial property right and, and it, 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 it it's removed from downtown so I mean that that is where the, the houses start right and I really I love the bookstore I mean I haven't been in it yet but I love the idea of it I, I love the development of it and the entrepreneurship of it um, and can't wait to visit but um, I just I just can't so anybody else Mr. Davis at this picture I'm looking at, I don't see any sidewalks. Not there are any. not. There's no, none in that That's part of my issue as well. How wide is the street? It's a regular. Can thing. you park two cars, one on each side, and have two go down through the center? Yeah, oh, yeah. Pretty wide streets. There. Yeah, it's okay. If, it's if, 40 foot. I would say they're 40 foot streets. If the right of way is um, 55.6, and it's it's your standard local street of, yeah. of uh, probably it's probably closer to 35. 33 to 35 feet, but it's your standard. Yeah, the original ones, I uh -huh. believe, were 55. Yeah, the, the actual right of way from property line to property line is, is 55.6. For the original city of Victoria down there. I think one of the criteria we considered last time we granted a variance was what's the ultimate goal of this? At, at, at what point does the owner say, okay, there's enough business here, I've got to move elsewhere? In other words, we're, we gave another... Uh, uh, owner an opportunity to get a toehold and they readily admitted without any solicitation or questioning from us that their, their full intent was not to stay there if they were successful. So I'm curious as to what what uh, the thinking or criteria is for how long this would exist. Or would just be allowed to, to, to grow indefinitely in this location? Or was there a way even to there create a variance that would cover that, I guess, is, right. is part of your question. You know, we, we're, here we are trying to, to do something to benefit our downtown area, and and a bookstore, we, we don't have anything in Victoria anymore, so giving them a bit of a toehold and getting a start, that's conditional, uh, might be reasonable. But is I think there should be some conditions thing? attached. If, if no, you were to condition to just the property owner um, and, and just this business, then if um, the business were to ever leave, then it wouldn't. Another business would not be able to potentially locate um, in there. But as far as the size or when the business expands beyond um, or, at, or is busy, so busy that it is, you know, causing issues in the area, there's uh, I don't foresee a condition that would really solve that problem. I, I don't I remember that coming up, Mr. Atkinson, what, what you referred to. She, she may have said that. I don't remember it. Uh, but regardless, 
I, I, I don't see how we can change in midstream. What's the rationale? Public safety? Then that should have been brought up previously. Well, I wasn't the, at in, that one. So. But in another case, that, that business owner did say this was a hobby business, okay. and she intended right. to not stay there had that she become successful. I, I yeah. guess I have to, to consider the other homes that are around there, because if it, if it is busy and you've got a whole lot of cars parking up and down that street, um, it, that's that's detrimental to the other homes that are that are there. And yes, there may not be many, but there but there are homes there. And and I guess maybe that's hits home to me a little bit more because just here recently I've ha had a lot of people complaining in other subdivisions about them parking boats and and huge cars and huge trucks and nobody has room for their own personal vehicles or people that come and visit them. So I mean it's it's it, it is an issue. It can be an issue. The discussion. How many square feet is is this bookstore supposed to be? Five thousand? No, One thousand? Does anybody know? It, it, I think that has a lot to do with the amount it's of parking the they're going to need. So I read it earlier. Let's see if we can find that. I'm trying to find it. Because that's how the parking the parking need is based. Yeah, the they don't actually yeah. have was, the number. They just say that. Um, yeah, it was, it was based off the the first floor, with the second floor being um, not used, utilized by the um, bookstore. It says two fifty per spot, so two fifty times ten, twenty five hundred ish, and that's kind of what I remembered. Twenty two something. I believe something. the entire house is somewhere in the thirty five hundred to four thousand square foot range. So that would be. 10 par parking spots? Was, right? Was it 10? That would be legal. That's what the code yeah, would the require? Code, yeah. Plus one handicap, right? I mean, one of those has to be handicapped. Any other discussion? Our scope is only around the, the street, not around the, the building itself as far as ADA compliance, I presume? The building code controls all of that. Do we have a motion? To grant the variance? Well, I, I, I move to grant the variance. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Hikes moved to grant the variance. All in favor? I'll second Say that. Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 I believe the ayes have it. Variance is granted. Next item on the agenda would be the consent agenda. Uh, I believe the only thing really on the agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes from our last meeting. Has everyone had a chance to look at them? Uh, do we have a motion on the consent agenda to adopt it? So moved. Do you have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Hode. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion granted. Other business? For point of order, can we get a show of oh. hands of who um, voted for approval So for the minutes? Minutes Michael, or the variance? I mean, no, for the minutes. The minutes. Yeah, no. so Michael, Brian, Jill. I think everybody did. Hands. Hands. For the minutes. Oh, oh for the minutes? For the minutes? Yeah. No, for, for the, the variance. variance. You're I'm talking sorry. about the variance. Yes, who voted okay. for the variance for the minute I thought, record? I thought, I thought, I thought you meant the variance. I thought, mm. <laughs> yes, <Nice> so <laughs> VJ, John, Mary, Ann, Jill, Brian, and Michael. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we just want to make sure that we um, accurately reflect that in the minutes. <laughs> Okay, other business. Other business. As you previously mentioned, the final plat for the ranches at Terra Vista phase two has been withdrawn. For the development services monthly report, we had one minor, plat, one minor plat, one major plat, and one site plan. The major plat was withdrawn. For the City of Victoria monthly act activity report, as you can see, this month we had less development in comparison to this month a year ago. That could be attributed mainly to uh, people reconstructing their property uh, following Hurricane Harvey. The city issued out 161 uh, combined permits, include, uh, including electrical permits, mechanical permits, and plumbing permits. And the city collected 
uh, nearly $37,000 in total fees. It's minor, but can I just point out that Andrea is misspelled on the minor plat one? <laughs> Thank you. We'll fix that. Any questions or comments? Any further business? Then I think we're adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Another exciting episode concluded. This is your last one? No, I got one.